Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Myanmar, previously known as Burma, was under military rule for more than half a century. In 1962, General Ne Win staged a coup, leading the country into a 26-year era of one-party rule. It wasn't until 2011 that the military junta was officially dissolved. But the military has retained considerable power from both behind the scenes and out in the open. Last November, Aung San Suu Kyi, the leader of the National League for Democracy, which had led the opposition to the junta, won by a landslide in a general election. The military-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party challenged the result, alleging 8.6 million election irregularities and evidence of fraud. The Election Commission rejected these allegations. Then on Monday this week, citizens of Myanmar woke up to find themselves once again under military rule and Miss Suu Kyi arrested again. This was to be the week in which Myanmar's first section of parliament since last November's election officially approved the democratically elected government. Instead, the military has detained Aung San Suu Kyi, President Win Myint and other elected officials. On Tuesday, the military-owned television station Yawadi TV showed Commander-in-Chief Min Online holding the first meeting of his government. A one-year nationwide state of emergency has been declared. Soldiers have been deployed across the city of Yangon. In the early hours of the coup, internet and telephone services were cut off. But there has been resistance. Citizens have banged pots and blared vehicles horns in protest. More than 190,000 people joined a civil disobedience movement's Facebook page to register their opposition. Facebook itself removed the military TV network's Facebook page. In turn, the military has blocked Facebook and other social media. On Wednesday, Medical workers from more than 80 government hospitals went on strike. Some wore red ribbon or showed a three-finger salute in support of Aung San Suu Kyi and say they do not recognize the military regime as their country's legitimate government. The Pulse talked to a government hospital doctor, Steve in Myanmar, who has joined the civil disobedience movement. His identity is concealed. Uh, we support NLD party. You know, mm. NLD party uh, represent the red color represent NLD party. We have the we have the similar event in the past, which the military doctor wants to take over our places. We just don't want to stop under the military service. I even can tell um, my feeling. I'm angry. I'm sad. The democracy will be lost totally if they take over this place. We will never get democracy again. We will never see our future. We will get the only dark side. Everyone will see the same. They want the freedom. Well, with me to talk about the coup in Myanmar, uh, Ian Holliday, Vice President of the University of Hong Kong, whose research focuses on Myanmar politics, and John Mack, a social entrepreneur based in Myanmar and in Hong Kong. John Mack, can I just come to you first? Obviously, you're working with people on the ground in Myanmar. What have you been hearing from them since the coup's taken place? I think um, it was pretty universal, um, universally in shock um, to start with, um, and then it you know, followed by a wave of uh, disappointment, um, but followed by a now a sustained uh, determination to resist. Um, I think I think a lot of people somehow felt that this was coming, but. When it came, it was still uh, a shock to them. Um, you know, years of progress now rolling back. Um, and I think this sentiment is felt across society, regardless of uh, um, sector or, 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 or even ethnicity. I think it's a, it's a pretty um, universally... But do you think this will actually bring people back out on the streets in, in the way they were about 20 years ago? I 
don't know about the streets, but I know at least for now, a lot of people are committed to the resistance. So within a few days, we have seen um, organized um, uh, movements of uh, uh, um, civil resistance um, on the part of uh, first medics um, going on strike, uh, and then increasingly um, a lot of civil servants, um, both in Rangoon and um, Nepitor, the capital, uh, have been going on strike, and they have made that a uh, uh, you know they have made that a, a pu public declaration of discord. And actually, as recent as today, I've heard from some reports that some diplomats are beginning to consider defecting, even um, Burmese diplomats. They should based be overseas, you mean? I've yeah. heard that there is mm. uh, 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 one based in Washington um, that might have defected, but uh, mm. we shall see. And can I ask you, um, Ian Holiday, why do you think at this time? after a decade of, of relative, well, I don't think it's been full democracy, but relative democracy, have the military decided to go back to their old habits? It is puzzling. They, they designed this system. It depends on the constitution from 2008, which was put together by really the military and, and their backers, uh, their supporters in the society. Um, it has been going, we would think, very well. They've been able to, in some ways, uh, move the regime on from a direct dictatorship, from a junta, which is what we had from, for 20 years from the 1990s through the 2000s, into something which the wider world is prepared to engage with. Um, investment flowed into Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Myanmar again became not, no longer a pariah state, but was in good standing in international society. So it is puzzling. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that the, initially the military didn't seem to be too concerned about the results of the general election. Um, it's, it's, its allied party, the USDP, was, and immediately um, floated the, the allegation of um, fraudulent election. Uh, it took the military a few days to sign up for that, mm. but they seem to have become more and more convinced that there have been irregularities that have favoured the NLD. Um, there were some irregularities. It's, it's almost impossible in Myanmar. Um, everything is paper-based. There's no computer-based uh, electoral list. So it's conceivable for individuals to register in more than one township, for instance. So there, there are some irregularities, but broadly, most people would say this was a free and fair election. But the military seems to have become consumed by this idea that um, an injustice has been wrought. Mm -hmm. And behind that, I think, there's, there's, a, there's a feeling that the NLD is becoming uh, a dominant party, a dominant presence in Myanmar politics. And Aung San Suu Kyi herself is obviously a very charismatic leader with a lot of support among mm. the people. And this is something that the military, which likes to be the one that holds the ring and calls the shots, mm. is finding more and more difficult to come to mm. terms with. Um, Min Ong Lang, who is the commander-in-chief, went public with his concerns and also asked mm. or demanded that the NLD um, look into some of the allegations, and they declined to do that. And there's also suggestions that he personally was keen on the coup because, you know, he's at retirement age and mm. there'd be no role for him in, in, in the government. I mean, do you buy any of that? Well, it's true, yes. I mean, I think there's a lot of personal vanity behind this. He's due to step down at the age of 65 in July from Commander-in-Chief. He doesn't have the kind of role that some of his predecessors had, which was taking on a more obvious political position as a government minister. Mm. So yes, it was unclear where he was going to go. There are also rumours that the, that the NLD was preparing um, a, a kind of corruption dossier on him and that he might be vulnerable mm. in that way. And of course, as commander-in-chief, he has access to all sorts of financial um, business networks, mm. which would be closed off from him in, in July if he were to step down. Uh, this is a military with a quite infamous um, track record for putting down opposition, throwing many people into jail for a very long period of time. I mean, do you think that this time round, again, it will be possible for what was essentially a regime of terror to work? You know, we are living in the 21st century where technological development, um, advanced um, technologies of communications, um, you know, are much more advanced than, you know, back in the days of the 80s. Um, so I think the ability to mobilize and organize is, is 
very different from the past. And not to mention, there have been various um, protest movements um, in, you know, in, in Southeast Asia, in East Asia, in fact, over the past few years. So there have been a lot of cross-learnings in terms of organizing tactics, in terms of what works best, in terms of how to avoid um, disunity, etc., um, in terms of decision-making processes. I think it's too early to say whether the movement will succeed. And then we have the question of Aung San Suu Kyi, who, who has been losing a lot of prestige in the international community, but mm. I would imagine not at home. What does this do for her? No, you're right that at home she's retained uh, the trust and the affection of the people throughout. I mean, even at the, the height of the Rohingya crisis back in 2017, when there was the wave of con condemnation raining down on Myanmar, none of that affected her status at home. And when she went to The Hague to defend the military mm -hmm. and to contest charges of genocide, she mm -hmm. even reinforced. So the, the landslide that the NLD won in uh, a couple of months ago in mm -hmm. 2020 was even bigger than in 2015, mm -hmm. which none of us expected. <laughs> um, the, the future for her, it's hard to say. I mean, I, she's now been arraigned on charges of, of, of uh, contravening the import-export law, mm -hmm. which oh. sounds absolutely <laughs> bizarre. But obviously the intention is to... Uh, remove her from the political realm. She is too potent a figure as a mobilizing figure for the people. Mm. They want her out. And I think the, they, the, what the military have said is that they will hold power for a year, and within mm. that year they will hold fresh elections. Now, they're determined that Aung San Suu Kyi should not be part of those elections. Mm. Maybe even that the NLD shouldn't be part mm. of those elections. And in any case, maybe the NLD wouldn't want to stand. I mean, mm. they've just won an election. Why should they rerun the whole process? So mm. if, 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 if the generals get their way, I think they want to see Aung San Suu Kyi out of political life but forevermore. But she's been such a dominant part of the opposition movement. Is there really, uh, at the moment, a replacement for her? No. I mean, one mm. thing that she's been careful not to do, unfortunately, is to groom in a successor. Mm. So without Aung San Suu Kyi, without, say, President Win Myint, mm. um, it's hard to see. There's, the, the NLD is very fragmented. Mm. without her. And in, in government, she was very much a controlling figure. All major decisions had to go to her desk, mm. no matter which ministry was involved. So that's, that, that's one of the problems that the Myanmar people face, is that without, without Aung San Suu Kyi, it's hard to see. I mean, John's talked a lot about the anger uh, that's felt on the streets, but that needs to be marshaled and channeled mm. in a certain way. And without Aung San Suu Kyi, it's hard to see who is going to step forward and do that right mm. now. Well, that's extremely interesting. Thank you both very much indeed. And we're going to be back after the break. See you then. Welcome back. Last week, the government announced that civil servants should prepare to resume providing basic public services after, in many cases, working from home due to the fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Many are returning to the office with an important decision to make. They're expected to sign a loyalty pledge before the Lunar New Year, and it's left some feeling conflicted and even confused. I 本人為中華人民共和國香港特別行政區政府公務員 Last December, more than two dozen undersecretaries and political assistants pledged allegiance to the city and swore to uphold the basic law at an oath-taking ceremony. I Last month, the Civil Service Bureau issued a circular requiring over 177,000 civil servants in the city to sign a declaration of allegiance to the government, promise to uphold the basic law, be dedicated to their duties and be responsible to the administration. Civil servants must return the signed form within four weeks. Those who refuse to sign the pledge could lose their jobs. If you have a 
或者簽妥同埋交回聲明，係會令人嚴重質疑啊！該公務員是否願意承擔呢啲基本嘅責任？ Apart from the declaration form, an explanatory note on the contents of the oath or declaration has been provided for civil servants. The document refers to behaviour by civil servants that may constitute a breach of the oath or declaration of being dedicated to their duties and being responsible to the government of the HKSAR. This includes a reference to anyone who exhibits improper conduct that aims to undermine the HKSAR in the governance and administration of Hong Kong, and seeks to incite discontent in the society against the administration, thus instigating or aggravating social instability. Civil servants may also be considered in breach of the oath or declaration if they express personal views without having regard to the appropriateness of the media or channel through which the views are expressed, thereby causing the community to associate such views with their official capacity as civil servants, and possibly cast doubts on their impartiality in the discharge of duties. Or on the principles and core values upheld by them as civil servants, the administration says such requirements are necessary and reasonable. 我亦都睇唔到一個宣誓或者係誒簽署聲明嘅要求會影響誒同事誒嘅士氣嚇誒。事實上，今日公務員嘅招聘咧，除咗喺警隊同埋懲教之外咧，大體上我哋係冇面對咩嘅問題。The Government Employees Association, the Hong Kong Civil Servants General Union, the Chinese Academy of Governance Hong Kong Alumni Association, and the Federation of HKSARG Civil Servants released a joint statement supporting the oath-taking requirement. We invited the organizations to send representatives for an interview. They turned us down. In private conversations with the Post, at least two dozen civil servants from a range of departments have expressed concerns about the lack of detail in the declaration and possible unforeseeable consequences. This young civil servant who calls herself Bean for our interview is one of them. Bean joined the government around two years ago. She says she's not going to sign the declaration and will resign, as she fears more draconian requirements will be imposed on civil servants in the future. 公共衞生而家都好多人會講啦，會唔會其實我只不過講句啊，陳少此局長咁樣做唔係幾好喎？會唔會其實就已經係違反咗呢一份聲明咧？因為我係唔支持政府，我自己諗嘢比較習慣諗比較最 worst 嘅情況，我都會唔會其實係？之後會陸續有嚟咧，政府咁樣做，其實佢背後個目的係啲乜嘢啊？有好多嘅差異，因為而家我哋唔相信個政府，所以先覺得點解要我宣誓 ？I myself would believe that it's a very reasonable request under the present circumstances to ask all civil servants to make this declaration. Had it not been? The problems we face for the past two years, since June 2019, at that time we had this、uh, protest over the extradition bill, and then followed by a series of other kinds of disturbances, which I think, according to the international reporting and reporting in Hong Kong, is total chaos being recorded. We need people who knows exactly the situation and will. Be loyal to the administration. This civil servant in his mid-thirties, who liked to be called Peter for our interview, has worked for the government for over ten years. He says he will sign the declaration as he needs to support his family financially during the economic downturn. He also hopes to be a watchdog while remaining in the government. Peter says he's most worried about the freedom of expression of civil servants. 其實喺聲明嘅字眼裏邊咧，好多都係好模棱兩可嘅，就好似公務員就算去用個人身份去表達意見嘅時候，都要避免俾人懷疑佢係執行職務嘅時候係會有偏頗。講到話懷疑，其實你唔需要有任何嘅真憑實據，已經可以令人覺得懷疑嘅啦。
同你政見唔同嘅人係想有心去污蔑你嘅話，其實係好容易俾人去用呢個宣誓嚟去令到你可能冇一份工，或者要承擔一啲法律嘅後果。我哋收到一啲同事嗰、那個、呃、查詢咧，就話：喂，我入咗嚟早兩個月，我以前咧嚇喺社交平台裏面講嘅嘢咧，又俾人哋篤出嚟喎，又話我上我街啊，又成，然之後咧就向呢、這個、呃、公務員事務局嗰邊嚇篤灰啊，人哋又去查喎、哦。喺咁嘅情況底下，個同事已經係憂慮咗一段頗長嘅時間啦。政府應該要再即係檢討翻篤灰呢一樣嘢。Since last December, the Post has been asking the Secretary for the Civil Service, Patrick Nip, for an interview, hoping to gain a clearer understanding of the oath-taking or declaration requirements. The invitations were declined repeatedly. In a written reply to our questions, the Civil Service Bureau says that taking the oath or signing the declaration would not affect the civil rights of civil servants, and would not affect civil servants in offering advice and contributing views in the course of discharging their duties. However, the Bureau also says that when civil servants exercise such rights, they must also be aware of the responsibilities and requirements brought on them by their official positions. If you want to sign a document that is so important, you should explain it clearly. 嚇，等同事考慮清楚，係嘛，先簽落去咧，係嘛？因為而家好多同事都話，我簽咗之後，我真係唔知個後果會係點嘅。The Civil Service Bureau says the pledge will also apply to those hired on a temporary or short-term basis with contracts up to three years, because they are also employees of the government. Details of the implementation will be announced later. I myself said that anyone. Who's receiving the monthly income, the salary through the public purse, must show their loyalty to Hong Kong, Hong Kong as well, and respect the Hong Kong SAR government. 政府都講過，就係話公職人員嘅轉職其實係可以好廣泛，佢將會去伸展到佢各行各業嗰度。如果第二日呢個面臨選擇嘅情況落喺你哋身上面嘅時候，你哋會點樣去處理咧？